welcome! This is the tutorial for the mini snowflake embroidery kit. Uh, this is what you're going to make. You can use it as a decoration. You can put it in your Christmas tree. It's small enough to fit. Um, when you're all done, if you want, you can just keep it in this hoop and put a cute ribbon on the top. What I like to do on the back is just um, do some running stitch around the perimeter. You'll probably want to trim off these like pointy edges. Um, and you just pull, I'll, I'll put a video tutorial in there. I'll, I'll put the link in there so you can see what I'm talking about. But basically you're going to cinch, cinch all the, uh, the fabric back. Um, now yours is actually going to fit on one of these hoops too. These are not included in the kit cause I, I didn't assume everyone would want one. Um, but these are kind of like a, a different kind of finish and you can directly, uh, hang that from your tree if you want to use it as an ornament. All right. So. In your kit, you are going to find some goodies. You're going to find the instructions, of course, here. Uh, and you're going to find the beginner guide here. You're going to have a four inch hoop. You're going to have a length of white uh, embroidery floss. You're going to have some really teeny tiny needles. And you're going to have some printed fabric. So again, like I said, this, is, this one's going to be small enough that it's going to fit in here. Uh, so when you want to get started, you're going to put your fabric in your hoop like this. Now if you want, you can use a screwdriver to get it extra super tight. Mine's not super centered, so I'm gonna try to pull it over a little bit to make it more centered. And you want it super duper tight, okay? So that when you hit it, you can kind of hear it. If, if you're hitting it and you're making like a dent in the fabric, it's not tight enough. So you can come here Use a screwdriver, tighten up this screw, and then you know, pull again on the edges. Sometimes when you pull, the top hoop kind of starts to pop up. So just put, push it back down and should be ready to go. If your fabric starts to get any like starts to get loose while you're stitching, you know, we stop, retighten it, okay? You don't want that looseness or you're gonna get puckering in your fabric when you're stitching. Excellent. All right, so your floss is gonna come in this bundle. It's just one long length. You may have two lengths because I forgot what I was doing when I was making the kits. <laughs> I wanted to make sure you had enough floss. So you, you don't wanna use this whole length at once. That's just way too long. So my recommendation that I put in the instructions was like 18 to 24 inches. Some people like to measure from the tip of their finger to uh, their elbow. That's a good length. And it might take a little bit of time to figure out what that perfect length is for you. Too short and you're going to have to continuously like replenish your floss and re-thread your needle. If it's too long, you're probably going to get tangles and knots. So there's a happy medium in there somewhere. Um, the kit does not come with scissors, so hopefully you have your own scissors at home. I am using these weird little clippers because I probably own 20 pairs of embroidery scissors, but of course they're all in the other room. Of course. <laughs> so you'll notice this embroidery floss, it's six stranded. So what you need to do is kind of, I'm trying to hide my ugly thumbnail because I got fake nails and didn't properly get, get all of the fake nail off. So I just, let's we'll pretend that's not a thing. And now we have a cat. Things are going really well here. Okay. So you only need one of these. So see how there's six, we just need one. So what you're gonna do after you cut that length you just pull out a single of these, okay? You don't wanna stitch with all six. It's gonna be way too thick, okay? So if you look here, see how like tiny skinny that is? Here's the bigger version, the six inch hoop version. And I used three strands on that. So you can see how much of a difference that is in the thickness. This one's just so tiny that if you use if it's too thick, if you use too many strands, it's just going to be overwhelming. Right, buddy? Yeah. What a good teacher he is. Okay, so once you have this single strand, then you can get it on your needle. These are really teeny tiny needles for a single strand. You may need to, like, lick the tip of your floss to kind of, if it's frayed at all. Because, even though it's a single strand, it's actually made up of two twisted strands. So, sorry, 
the camera really wants to focus on the cat and not on me. All right, so I'm getting threaded like this. And then, so I, oh my word, honey, honey, no thank you. So I have, <laughs> I have this short tail and then I have the long tail, right? And the long tail is what I'm going to be stitching with. So probably the easiest way to get started is just to tie a knot in that long tail. One's probably fine. If you want to do two, you can do two. No, thank you. And then when you come in here to start stitching, you can see how, see how I kind of lost some of my tightness. I think a cat maybe had walked across it and loosened it. Maybe, possibly. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, so then when I start stitching, my, my floss gets stuck, right? Because I have this little, it's very hard to see, my, my teeny little tail back here with a little knot that's keeping me anchored, okay? That's going to be the easiest way. So then as I stitch, you know, I probably want to make this other tail a little shorter to start. So I'm stitching with this length here. Yep, exactly there, honey. And as I stitch, I'm going to be using it, right? So I'm going to be pulling and making this other tail shorter and shorter and shorter as I work through the floss. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. When you do the center flower, you're going to be using two strands of floss. Now, this needle, like I showed you, is like super teeny tiny. So you may prefer instead to try something else, which I will show you here. So I'm going to do this again. Thread my needle. Good thing, see, I want it to be in focus so you can see what I'm doing, but I don't because then you'll have to see my ugly nails. All right, so <laughs> an easy way to, to uh, use two strands is you just use, um, you're going to double over this single strand, tie the knot with both ends together instead of having the long, one long, one short. Same, same length. And then when you stitch to do this uh, center rows, so I'm using two strands, right? Because it's, it's a single strand doubled over. Okay, does that make sense? And then either way, when you're done, like when you have, when you're running out of thread on your needle, make sure you leave an inch or two so that when you're done with this strand, you can come and kind of like do a couple of weaves here and then trim no thanks and then you would get a new length of floss assuming you had run out okay awesome let me show you the stitches without a cat so let's get started i'm going to go ahead and start at the end of this line so i'm going to come up start with this tulip stitch i'm going to come up at the top the little tulip and you're going to make a loop by going back down in that same hole and then you are going to catch this loop down here at the bottom of this little tulip this is essentially your detached chain stitch and we're going to finish it. Instead of finishing it right close up to the first stitch, we're going to actually come down to the base of the tulip. So this becomes the stem. Now if you want to come in, I kind of got pulled tight because I got stuck on my stand. But you can come in here and pull a little bit to make it a little poofier again. <laughs> and then I'm just going to kind of hold it down while I pull my stem. There we go. Alright, and so then for these two side stitches, it's just straight stitches. I prefer to go from the edge towards the center for those. Just like that. 
Next, we're going to work these two pieces. These are both satin stitch. I prefer to have my stitches uh, along the length of the shape. So that's what I'm going to do. And starting in the center, this helps me keep a consistent stitch direction throughout the shape. Good guideline to work off of. So with satin stitch, we just line up a bunch of straight stitches. Ideally, they're the thickness of the floss away from each other. That is, they will be perfectly lined up laying next to each other. No lumps or bumps, in theory. In practice, not always. It's a little tricky at the edge here. I'm gonna actually work the other side and see how the shape looks before I decide if I add any more stitches. This might be the hardest part of this pattern, is these tiny little diamonds. So do the best you can. If it turns out the stitch direction is confusing, you can choose something else. Like perhaps you want to stay like this. That would probably be easier. How about I'll do that for the second one? Because it's, it's these corners that are really hard to, to stitch. Sorry, I keep forgetting I, I have my phone hooked up somewhere different. I hooked it up to my um, window shade. <laughs> so the arm is very high. <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so I'm going to try this stitch length, or excuse me, stitch direction over here. I feel like this is going to be a lot easier. I guess I should have done... I should have started in the center, like I said, but... So you can see I, I have a little gap here. So if, if you do that, you can either take your stitch out and try again. I'm going to kind of cheat and actually add an extra stitch in here. Fill in that one little gap. I feel like this looks so much better. So your instructions are going to say to do it like this. Even though my sample has only one diamond done like this. But wow, I should have been doing that the whole time. All right, let's move on. We're going to go ahead over here. And this is going to be our feather stitch. So feather stitch is made of a series of fly stitches. So I'm coming up, going back down on the other side of this first U, keeping the loop, and then I'm going to come up at the base of that U, and this will be the top of the U for the next stitch. Just continues back and forth. These interlocking U's. You don't want to pull too hard when you pull through. 
where you'll have interlocking V's, which is also fine, but it might not cover the guidelines completely. So at the end here, I did something a little fun. So for the last one, instead of just anchoring right here, we're going to anchor here. And you'll see that's going to create half of the first stitch for our wheat ear. But let me go ahead and finish the other side. Excellent. So I'm going to just come down to the same hole here, and that is going to be the start of our wheat ear stitch. Uh, if you're not starting like this, let's say you're doing the ear on a different pattern, you would just begin with two straight stitches creating a little V, and then you come up stitch length away. So on your guide, it's going to be the base of the next V and you are going to weave through this V. You're not going under the fabric. You're just weaving. Catching your loop under there. And then going back down that same hole you went up. Again, don't pull too tight or we'll lose our, the shape of our loop. It won't be as rounded. how my poor tulip got pulled a little too tight. So, it's hard to see. There are still the guidelines underneath here. So we're gonna do our two straight stitches converging at that same hole we went down. And we repeat. This time, come up at the base of the next stitch. Not only do we weave through the V, we also weave through the previous stitch. So essentially, it's a reverse chain stitch with extra straight stitches at each intersection. Next, we're going to go ahead and do this leaf here. This is going to be a fishbone stitch. Start at the top of the leaf. Go down, maybe around halfway, a little bit further. Now come up to the right of that first stitch. 
along the right edge of the leaf, cross over that middle line, and bring your floss down there on the other side of that middle line. And then repeat on the left, up to the left, cross over, down, up on the right, doesn't quite matter where you go down because these stitches are going to be covered, the bottoms of them. So they can be messy down there. They don't have to look anything pretty. Towards the end, they aren't crossing each other anymore. You basically fill in the rest with some straight stitches, or I guess you could call it satin stitch. Like that. Next I'm gonna move up and do this little woven wheel rose. There are five spokes on this teeny tiny circle. They're a little bit hard to see. You don't need to match them up perfectly with the guidelines if you can't see them. Just create five spokes in that circle, converging in the center, starting at the edge. Try to keep them as equal distance apart as you can to make a little star. Like that. Next you're going to come up near the center, not at the center, or you'll undo your last stitch. And you're going to begin to weave around your shape here. So I'm going to go over the first one, under the second one, over the third, under the fourth, etc. I don't know if you can see my fingers underneath here, and I kind of push, push it up a little bit to help me from stabbing my fabric. Kind of keeps it lifted and a little bit easier to go weave under these stitches. So there's an odd number of stitches, which means you'll get this cool rose effect as you continue. If this is too tiny, you want to put some other stitches here. You can make little French knots to fill in the shape try a different kind of rose stitch, chain stitch rose, stem stitch rose. I usually do this with a full strand of floss, not a single ply. It's definitely a much more delicate situation. It takes a bit longer too. So at this point I can't really see my spokes anymore. I'm kind of guessing. However, you can also, if you just want to kind of fill it out a little bit more, you can just add 
few stitches. Like this. Just kind of fill it out a little bit. So next I'll do the leaves here. These are just satin stitch. Starting in the center. They're very tiny, you won't get many stitches in. Next up, we'll do these little branch stitches. This is called fern stitch. Starting with the bottom, basically you're going to make three straight stitches converging in one spot. I, for whatever reason, do the center line first. And then one on the other side. Doesn't matter which. And then repeat. Stacked right on top. When you come down with this stitch, make sure you are going in the same hole as that original stitch here, so you don't have a gap. Trying to get in that same hole. Need my glasses. And do the same thing on this side. For this diamond shape, we're going to do buttonhole, sometimes called blanket stitch. We're going to treat this shape as four different lines, which will help us get a better, sharper angle with those edges. I'm going to start with this line here. I'm going to come up at the base. And I'm going to think about where do I want my first spike to come out. Probably around here. So I'm going to go down here. You could think of it as a stitch length over and a stitch length up. I'm leaving a loop. And I'm going to catch that loop along the guideline. Like that. Okay, I'm going to do another one, I can probably just fit two on these shorter lines. And I'm going to go down at that corner. Now 
want to continue here, but if I come back up at this spot, I'll obviously just undo what I just did. So I'm actually going to now jump over to this side. Come up, leave a loop, go down where I want the spike to end. I'm quite indecisive. I think I used a different number of spikes, different lengths of spikes, different angles of spikes for all of these. That looks fine. So don't worry. If yours doesn't look like mine, or if none of yours look alike, we have some kind of situation here. Here we are. If you want to draw your spikes in ahead of time before you do your stitching and then cover your guidelines, you can definitely do that. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. If you want to do this shape is just a continuous line that's totally fine it looks like I probably did it here on some of these other ones you can just see that the edges are a little bit more rounded all right so I'm gonna come back up here through that old stitch and by doing this I'm gonna have a sharper angle when I come up so there's more of an edge rather than a curve. If it's not worth that slight difference to you, then just do one continuous blanket stitch around the entire perimeter. And our last one. So to finish it off, we're just going to do another woven wheel rose in the center. In theory, I probably would have done this stitch first, actually, because uh, I may end up stabbing some of my finished work while I'm doing this weaving. So I've switched to two strands of floss for this larger rose, just to kind of help us get through it a little faster, to give it a little bit more bulk too. I think it would take a very long time with a single strand. Doing the same thing, my five stitches converging in the center. I'm going to come up near the center. 
begin my weaving. This is a stitch I really like to do without a clamp so I can move the hoop instead of my wrist. So I'm pretty much out of spokes to weave. I can visually see, so I'm just going to go down just like that. I think that looks pretty good and pretty centered. If you want, you could add some more. I guess I have a little gap over here, so I'll, I'll add a stitch right here just so we can't see. So you can see I have some of my fabric showing through there. So I'm just gonna add a stitch like this. Just gonna cover that up. But now I kinda have a little bit of a bump over here. So I'm gonna blend that in like this. Just like that. 